Hello, you're watching Armando Hasunungan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasunungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and post interesting things. Now, this video is carrying on from the metabolism and glycolysis. It's talking about gluconeogenesis, which is essentially making new glucose from amino acids, fats, acyl-CoA. But in this case, we are concentrating on pyruvate. And as we have learned in glycolysis, glucose yields two pyruvate molecules. Glycolysis is a 10 reaction process. Now, gluconeogenesis um, means making new glucose, and it's the reserve of glyco glycolysis, but with three differences. Because if you remember, some reactions in glycolysis are irreversible. There are actually three reactions. And so these three reactions require different enzymes, which we will learn in this video. Um, in times when the body needs to produce more glucose, there are other sort of metabolites that can be used to synthesize glucose. Uh, for example, alanine from muscle, amino acid, can convert to pyruvate to initiate gluconeogenesis. Or other amino acids from various proteins can also do the same thing. Um, even glycerol from fat tissues, such as adipose tissues, can be a source for gluconeogenesis and comes in um, through glycerol diethylphosphate, I think. Now, let's learn the three different reactions in gluconeogenesis, starting from pyruvate. So, first reaction is from pyruvate to phosphorylenol pyruvate. And this reaction is special because it's a two-step reaction. It first converts to oxaloacetate, then to phosphoenolpyruvate. And this enzyme used is pyruvate carboxylase, which decarboxylizes, removes a carbon dioxide from the pyruvate to form oxaloacetate. And this reaction actually requires ATP to run. And also something to note is that this enzyme, pyruvate carboxylase, is only present in the mitochondria. So really, pyruvate has to travel into the mitochondria first before commencing gluconeogenesis. So the second reaction, um, oxaloacetate with the enzyme phosphoenolpyruvate kinase will then convert to phosphoenolpyruvate. And it gets its phosphate group from GTP. And also, carbon dioxide group, um, which was previously lost, is obtained back. So in this reaction alone, quite some energy is invested. The next reaction, which is irreversible in glycolysis, is from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. And this, so from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate here, to fructose 6-phosphate. And this reaction requires fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, which hydrates fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, releasing the phosphate. So here we will have water coming in and releasing the phosphate group to form fructose 6-phosphate. And the last reaction that is not irreversible, that is that cannot be reversed in glycolysis, is from glucose 6-phosphate to glucose with the ends and what the enzyme used to reverse this reaction is glucose 6-phosphatase um, and it also is a hydration reaction so water comes in releasing the phosphate group so next let's see glycogen talk about glycogen synthesis now the synthesis of glycogen actually does not begin with glucose but usually begins with glucose 6-phosphate and so so it doesn't begin with glucose, it begins with glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose has to convert to glucose 6-phosphate before initiating glycogen synthesis. So what is glycogen anyway? Glycogen synthesis. Okay, so if you imagine you eat a lot of food, carbohydrates, bread, you consume a lot of glucose and you are in a fed state. Now, the main organs for glycogen synthesis is the liver and the skeletal muscle. 
if we look at this individual who is in the fed state and look at it, what's inside his blood, we can see that he has many glucose molecules. So he has high blood glucose levels after eating. This is normal. Now when there is high blood glucose levels in the body, the body will package up these glucose molecules up. They'll package it up to form uh, glucose polymers known as glycogen so that it can be stored uh, easily. And so, yep, these glucose molecules will be packaged up to form glycogen. And this glycogen can be then stored in skeletal muscle or the liver for use. So, but what happens if after a day, what happens after a day of no eating? Well, this would mean the fasted state. This would mean the fasted state. And if we look at this uh, lady's body and look at her uh, blood circula circulation, um, she will have low blood glucose levels because she's in a fasted state. She hasn't ate anything. So what happens in this fasted state is the liver, which is the liver, is the main site of blood glucose regulation and it helps keep it stable. Well, the liver will begin to degrade the glycogen to glucose, releasing it to the bloodstream to keep blood glucose in equilibrium. That's glycogen. So going back to the map, uh, glycogen synthesis begins when glucose 6-phosphate converts to glucose 1-phosphate with the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. The phosphate was just moved from the 6th carbon to the 1st carbon. That's why it's a mutase enzyme. Uh, next, glucose 1-phosphate will convert to UDP glucose, which looks a bit complicated, and this is by the enzyme UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. And what is added is UTP. Now, the U stands for uridin, and it is attached to the phosphorylated fructose, which is then attached to glucose 1-phosphate. Um, and then... Finally, uh, UDP glucose will attach the glucoses together with each other and form a long chain, um, and this is done in the presence of the enzyme glycogen synthase. The uridine fructose phosphate molecule is released. So what happens in the degradation of glycogen during a fasted state? Well, glycogen will be phosphorylated by glycogen phosphorylase to form glucose 1-phosphate which will then convert to glucose 6-phosphate back to glucose by the same reaction. Now, other glucose, so by glycogen phosphorylase. Now, and yeah, phosphorylate with inorganic phosphate. Uh, so what are, so other glucose providers are from starch, which is very similar to glycogen, but with different, but it's different in numbers of branches that occur. Now, starch, with the enzyme diastase will be hydrated to form many maltoses. Maltose is a disaccharide composed of two uh, glucose molecules. Now, maltose, maltose with the enzyme glucosidase will be hydrated to form glucoses. Yes, and there is also sucrose, which is also a disaccharide, but composed of two different monosaccharides. So when it is split in half by the enzyme sucrase and dehydrated in the process, it will form the monosaccharides glucose and fructose. And remember, fructose is a still six carbon, but it's a five drink structure. So that was it for the video. Um, next, we will learn about glycerol synthesis from fructose and also phosphatidic acid synthesis from glycerol and how they're all connected in this map. I hope that was good. Uh, please comment, like, and share. Thank you.